Now our initial page layout doesn't do much, but it just provides the basic framework that's necessary in order to get the ball rolling, basically is what it does. So we've got um, our page block here. We've got two buttons, one which is called save and return. Now it's currently disabled, and it's disabled because uh, we don't have any product sets that we can actually assign to the opportunity. So we've set this button to be disabled. And then we have a standard cancel button, which goes back to the opportunity. And so the cancel button uses one of the built-in um, controller actions. And so we don't actually have to write any custom code to do that. It just it, It's taken care of automatically for us by Salesforce. And then something else you'll notice, which you might not see very often, but is a uh, it's a layout UI technique I like. I like to put um, things over here on the right hand side of a page block that are relevant to all of the items that get displayed in the page block. So sometimes I'll put a drop down menu here, especially if you're displaying a list of items, I'll put a drop down menu that says display 10, display 100, display 1000. And that allows you to very quickly um, limit the number of, of results that you're showing. Now, I generally do this using what's called an action support tag, where I can simply say, when the value changes, re-render this section. Uh, in this particular case, I have an input area and a button. Now, the purpose of this input area will be to filter the results that are displayed in this section. Essentially, it's a quick search. You, you type in... Um, you type in a keyword here and then it will only display the product sets that match that particular keyword. So let's look at how this, this is actually implemented behind the scenes. So what we have is we have our form and our page block with our title, available product sets. Then we have our group of buttons. Now our group of buttons covers everything from here to here. That's what our page block buttons covers. Now in this case, we've actually, the only thing that we have in our page block buttons is this action status tag. And so the way that this action status tag will work is that when you click on the save, or actually when you click on the filter button, it will go ahead and it will display a loading image uh, next to two disabled buttons. And so let's actually... Um, remove this disabled section right here. So this disabled attribute says disable the filter button if the product set count, i.e. the total number of product sets that we have available to show is equal to zero. So we're going to save that and I'll let it do its thing which we can watch down here while I go on and talk a little bit more. So below the buttons we've got our page section. Our page section contains two items. It contains a table and it contains a, uh, an output text item here. So these are rendered at different times. The table is only rendered when we have more than one, i.e. the product set count is not equal to zero. So when we have more than one product set to display, it will show a table. It will show a table that has a view and select link and it will show the name and the associated campaign of each particular product set. And so, in the other case, where we don't have any product sets, it'll just display a message, no product sets are available. And if we actually go back to our page, that's what we're seeing right now. Because we haven't built the logic to actually insert product sets yet. We're still just working on the, let's see what we have. So now, since we've saved that, if I reload this page, um, and we'll do one more thing. Well, we don't actually have to do that. So if I click this filter button now, what we'll see is we will see this loading image pop up. The other thing that you'll notice is that our cancel button becomes disabled. So that's the purpose of the action status here. We've got a start facet and a stop facet. The start facet gets displayed while the Ajax action is being processed. And it shows our two buttons, both of which are disabled, and a loading image. And then as soon as the Ajax image, the Ajax process has stopped, we return um, and display just the buttons, the, just the normal button. So we have our save and returns, and we have our cancel button, and then we have our filter criteria.